So the Nasdaq up more than 20% from a December low. The Nasdaq rally's a bit overdone. People are expecting the same sort of performance we saw post COVID. And I think the conditions are just very different. It's not a supporter for that. We Today, we're shining the spotlight on none other than the legendary Michael Berry. You remember him from the big short? That's right, the guy who nailed the 2008 housing crash prediction. Barry has taken the internet by storm, building a massive following with his uncanny ability to spot potential risks in the market. He's been sounding the alarm for over a decade, even calling a spike in inflation earlier this year. But here's the twist, Barry recently stunned everyone by admitting he was wrong. So the question burning in your minds is, what was he wrong about? Well, you should stick with us as we dig deep into the details and also uncover what Barry's change of heart could mean for each and every one of us as investors. We won't waste a second, so let's jump right in. Recently, Michael Barry made headlines when he publicly acknowledged that he was wrong. Now, this is quite a statement considering Barry's track record of accurate predictions, but what exactly was he wrong about? Let's delve into the details and uncover the fascinating story behind it all. For years, Barry has been warning about potential risks in the market, and earlier this year, he even predicted a spike in inflation. However, something changed in his outlook. On January 31st, Barry sent out a one-word tweet that said, Sell. This tweet came at a time when the stock market was on a remarkable upswing. In fact, the Nasdaq composite had risen by a staggering 10.7% in January, marking its best start to a year in almost two decades. Many interpreted Barry's tweet as a cautionary signal to investors, advising them not to be lured by the market gains and urging them to refrain from buying into the rally. And just a few days after his tweet, on February 2nd, the S&P 500 index reached its highest close of 2023. However, this was followed by weeks of declines, with the index falling roughly 3% since then. But here comes the twist. Barry surprised everyone by retracting his statement. He tweeted that he was wrong to say sell, and went as far as congratulating those who took advantage of the market dip to buy stocks. Now, it's unclear whether Barry's latest tweets were laced with sarcasm, but something significant happened around the same time. The tech-focused Nasdaq 100 entered a technical bull market for the first time in nearly three years. It closed 20% higher from its December 28th low, sparking speculation that Barry's change of heart could be a signal of a broader shift in the market sentiment. After all, Barry's reputation for foresight has earned him respect. And if he admits he was wrong, it could very well indicate a turning point. Is this a bull market or is this a bear market rally? And either way, it's basically how you frame it depending on where you think the trajectory is. I think the Fed can continue to have the narrative of hiking, maybe another hike of 25 basis points, stay there, foot on the brake, foot on the gas. It's counterintuitive, but this is where global central bank policies are going right now. So what does all of this mean? Well, one possible interpretation is that we might be on the verge of a new bull market. But what exactly is a bull market, you might ask? Simply put, it's a period when securities experience a price increase of more than 20% after a period of decline. While Barry doesn't explicitly make this claim, analysts are speculating that his change in stance could be an indication of shifting tides in the market. Now, let's pause for a moment and let's talk about how you might have felt when you first heard that Barry admitted he was wrong. Did it surprise you? Did it make you question your own investment strategy? You're not alone if you feel confused or uncertain. In fact, recent surveys reveal that over three quarters of Americans are bracing themselves for a very volatile market in 2023. And if that wasn't enough to keep us on our toes, a significant 62% of participants are preparing for a potential recession this year. Now, let's break it down. Here's the bad news. The likelihood of a recession is looking increasingly probable. The experts at JP Morgan Chase project a greater than 50% chance of it happening sometime in 2023. It's an unsettling prospect that can make it challenging to maintain optimism about the stock market and economy. But hold on tight, because there's also good news on the horizon. Brace yourselves for a possible bull market, and here's the kicker. It might arrive sooner than expected. We all know that no downturn lasts forever. And history has shown us time and time again that the market eventually bounces back. It's merely a matter of time before we witness that remarkable rebound. In fact, the stock market is often described as being forward-looking. During economic uncertainty, it usually declines before the economy does. The reverse is also true. Typically, the market recovers before the economy hits rock bottom, except for a few exceptions. 
The inner workings of the stock market and economy can be complex and confusing. But what you need to know is that waiting for the economy to fully recover before diving into investments could mean missing out on the early stages of the next bull market. Let's take a quick trip down memory lane to the Great Recession. In March 2009, the S&P 500 hit its lowest point, signaling a significant downturn. However, it's important to note that the recession didn't technically end until June of that same year. During those few months, something extraordinary happened. The S&P 500 surged by an impressive 40%. Imagine if you had waited for the economy to be on their rebound before investing. You would have missed out on those incredible earnings. So, here's the takeaway. While we can't predict with certainty whether we're in the early stages of a bull market or simply experiencing a temporary rebound before prices fall again, waiting for stock prices to unequivocally rise means forfeiting valuable time to grow your investments. No doubt investing during uncertain times can be a nerve-wracking endeavor. But here's a valuable tip. Seize the opportunity to buy during the market's low points and patiently weather the storm. It's a tried and true method for building long-term wealth. Now, let's talk about investing in the right places. It's crucial to ensure the safety of your hard-earned money. During a recession, weaker companies face a tougher battle for survival, making their stocks inherently risky. On the other hand, healthy businesses with solid fundamentals such as strong financials and a competitive advantage are far more likely to bounce back after a downturn. By filling your portfolio with these resilient stocks, you provide yourself with an added layer of protection against the hardships of recession. Although your investments may experience temporary setbacks in the short term, there is a significant higher chance that they will make a full recovery in due course. Let's face the truth. No one can accurately predict where the market is headed in the upcoming months. However, it's important to remember that it's only a matter of time before the market embarks on a road to recovery. What do you think? Was Michael Berry wrong to say sell? And is he wrong again to say he was wrong? Do you think we're on the verge of a new bull market? Let us know in the comments. With that said, thanks for watching and see you in our next video. So the Nasdaq up more than 20% from a December low. The Nasdaq rally has been overdone. People are expecting the same sort of performance we saw post COVID. And I think the conditions are just very different. It's not a supporter for that. We but the Fed has proven by hiking rates the last time instead of just pausing for a moment in the midst of a banking crisis is that they're really ready to continue to push short rates higher until the household and business pain is felt, i.e. probably recession. I think we actually get a lot of resonance on this idea that inflation is still strong and underlying inflation is still strong. And where there's more of a question from clients is, does the Fed have the ability to respond to that?